I submit to you that we live in Mordor. It is not by accident, and we have not been hijacked by one or several nefarious individuals. Mordor ow, has been built as a result of our values. We have successfully imposed the values of our collective will. Things everywhere have been going increasingly according to plan. It's time for a concerted and imaginative evaluation of what is right and wrong. What can I do here? Okay. People do this all the time. Individuals, families, businesses, even nations. Traditionally, disputes between nations are resolved by warfare. And though we still have global disputes, we cannot withstand a global war of nations. Our weaponry is too clever. Uh, okay. Philosopher and terrorist Ted Kaczynski <laughs> sought to demonstrate this by living in isolation in the wilderness. Yeah. But I'm Ted Minecraft Zinski, and I'm afraid to say that the only way out is through. We must acknowledge those we've been taught to despise. Today I'm here with my friend Theodore Rosak, and together we will build for you a model of the world, its inherent value structures, and how these reveal themselves in our feelings and behaviors. Oh. Since the Industrial Revolution, the, industrial revolution the world has not now disaster. to disaster. Since the Industrial Revolution, the world has fallen increasingly under the auspices of technocracy. Regardless of which individuals or organizations have held governmental or cultural power, the trend of increasing technocracy has been inexorable. Drawing upon such unquestionable imperatives as the demand for efficiency, for social security, for large-scale coordination of people and resources, for higher and higher levels of affluence, and ever more impressive manifestations of collective human power. Politics, education, leisure, entertainment, culture as a whole, the unconscious drives, and even, as we shall see, protest against the technocracy itself, all of these have become the subjects of purely technical scrutiny and of purely technical manipulation. The effort is to create a new social organism whose health depends upon its capacity to keep the techno technological heart beating regularly. In the words of Jacques Ellon, technique requires predictability and no less exactness of prediction. It is necessary then that technique prevail over human being. Technique must reduce man to a technical animal. In the technocracy, nothing is any longer small or simple or readily apparent to the non-technical man. Instead, the scale and intricacy of all human activities, political, economic, cultural, transcends the competence of the amateurish citizen and inexorably demands the attention of specially trained experts. Within such a society, the citizen confronted by bewildering bigness and complexity, finds it necessary to defer on all matters to those who know better. It would be a violation of reason to do otherwise, since it is universally agreed that the prime goal of society is to keep the productive apparatus turning efficiently. The complex and self-contradicting codes of our society are all but impossible to follow. Violating these codes is so frequently either punitive or impossible. Our only viable option is to turn our frustration and alienation inwards, as shame or guilt. We are coerced into becoming what our society expects of us, in diminishing ourselves to make room.
One result of this is that others seem to increasingly resemble NPCs, and we even see it happening in ourselves. At its worst, we become like zombies, mindlessly possessed by animating principles that do not belong to us. That's right, Ted. The motivating power of technocracy lies then in its capacity to convince us of three interlocking premises. Number one, the vital needs of man, contrary to all the wisdom of history, are purely technical in character. If a problem does not have a technical solution, it must not be a real problem. Number two, that the technological utopia is coming. It's almost complete, and any objectionable outcomes at this point are little snags or bugs. Number three, that the experts who know best to provide for our needs, the ones who really know what they're talking about, are the ones we hear from. They're the good guys. Hi. We'll get back to that little issue in a moment, but if you feel bad all the time, thinking about how things should be too much can make you worse. Don't forget to make effort to be in equilibrium with your circumstances. There are a lot of traditions with high reviews, but each of them work best when you embody them. Spirituality is not a technical solution. This political compass is typically used to map the range of political preference that people can have. But all of that has been captured by the ideal of technical progress. For some time, there has been growing discontent, despite the advancement of convenience, abundance, and distraction. There must always be tension between the young and the old. But to ignore or explain away the pattern of radical disaffiliation in all of its expressions, exhibited by youth of the last 70 years, is to disregard an important indicator of our society's health. Don't you think? Do these have something in common? They are all revolt against the prevailing winds of social organization. Only we have lost sight of this while focusing on this. However you have come to judge these radicals, these radicals, these radicals, those are our children, they are us. To disregard them because of your judgments is to throw away your position as an adult member of society. By convincing yourself that they are failing you, you are failing them.